What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Engadget Podcast live stream. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. This morning, I am joined with our reviews editor, Sherlyn Lowe. Hello, Sherlyn. Hello. All, all the way over there. And in between us is our podcast producer, Ben Elman. Hey, Ben. Hello. Hello. Good morning to everybody joining us. Um, you you are all here for something special because this is our actually our uh, 100th episode uh, of the audio podcast. Not one. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to hear that again. We're going to hear that again, the audio. Um, not the video, right? We started doing the video last summer, I think. So it was after we had Basically, already begun everything. Yeah. The Engadget podcast has been around for eons. and But it's for this version around. of it, this episode yeah. 100, it's going great. Thanks, y'all. I mean. It's going great. We're I just all very tired. Dude. It's great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And actually, the video version of the podcast has helped uh like i think helped a lot of people find out about it and also like helped us get more in touch with the people who actually listen so this has just been a lot of For fun sure. shout out to julio who is managing the air horn right now and this live stream and our entire video team hello everybody yeah. joining us yeah Yes, hi to Jesse K from India. Uh, Jimmy mm. Chong is here. Josh Sakdeva is here. Uh, Jonathan Tran, Joss Wan, little lost, little boy lost 101. <laughs> and I think I saw Arvin Medina from the Philippines. Jaime nice. Avalos, nice, nice. Marcy, Dom Larry. Thanks for joining us. All over the world. We are gonna, and just so you guys know, as I mentioned in the chat, we're gonna start. We're gonna kick off this episode just by asking you some questions. So you know, so start thinking of some, bank some around whatever this the latest products news whatever you're feeling this episode will be featuring our thoughts on the macbook pro all both new macbook pros the pixel 6 final thoughts and uh facebook papers of course too Oof, the facebook, facebook papers, papers. facebook papers it should be the facebook files but it's the facebook mm. papers well yeah <sighs> We get stuck on this sort of stuff because it's like for a while everything was gate, water, gate, yeah, all of that yeah. other stuff. Now, since the Panama Papers, it's been everything else papers, Paradise mm -hmm, Papers, mm -hmm. Facebook Papers, just because sure. like it's fine. Whatever. As long as long as the info is getting out there. Carissa Bell from Engadget is gonna be joining us for that too, to chat about that. So stay tuned, everybody. <clears throat> Hi to Michael Coley, GTGT, GT, Gijo Augustian. Tyreek White from Chicago, Hugo Mendoza from Peru, and uh, Taliam Taltal, I think. And mm -hmm. then I think we're getting a few more questions about the Mac, which is great. For so. sure. I will mentally bookmark Chi Ming Chung asks about gaming on the MacBook Pro, and I can, I can talk about it. Nice, that. yeah. It's not, it's, it's Lee not, Ti Lee it's, it's says hi from mainland China. Hi. Hello. You Wow, okay. But the two-second review is that it's not so much the MacBook's hardware fault. It's the like development side. It's, I mean, it's kind of everything. It, it's everything that got Apple to this point, but we will, we'll dive into that. All right. So okay, if this sure. is your first time joining us, we are going to be recording the podcast. We're not always going to be able to talk with you guys, but in this first section, we're going to ask you some Q&A. So that'll be wrapped into the episode. Um, and then we'll be diving into it, like our specific segments, and we can't really talk with you guys there, but we'll shout. We'll shout if we're doing Q&A in between anything. Yeah, so uh, just let, you know, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. Everyone else will be keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, yeah. I'm just really happy that we got to episode 100 because Absolutely. I remember very clearly. Um, well, the first episode, I was actually sick. So we mm -hmm. did it. We recorded the first episode of this new version of the Engadget podcast remotely. That was kind of a portent of what was going to be happening yeah. later on that like predicted how we were going to be doing it now. Um, and that was in. Um, the sound effects, y'all, are for are, <laughs> are not anything that I can control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that was in October of 2019. And then like a little later, we started going it, like I started going into the Engadget office and we mm -hmm. would uh, record there. And I remember I started labeling the files like zero, zero, five, zero, zero, six. And I was like, huh, it's kind of silly that I'm <laughs> counting up to three numbers because I'm not sure we're going to get to we, three we numbers. Most podcasts got... uh, die. Yeah. 
We got the three numbers. It's cool. We got the three it's numbers. really amazing. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Congrats to Ben and Trilin and everybody for helping us make this possible. And you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Congratulations to you. The, the actual podcast king. The it's podcast been fun. Entrepreneur. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, 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 we're making it happen here. Uh, it, it, it is, I think, the hard part about doing this, just so you all know, there are so many tech podcasts out there. So. If you're enjoying us, please be sure like to tell the world, tell your friends, leave us a review on iTunes because there is stiff competition out there. Uh, yes, let us absolutely. kick things off if you guys are ready. Uh, so are we going to do like the intro and then yep. Q&A? Yep. Okay. That's, my, that's my thing. Sure. Just to be like, hey, what's up? And also just drink into the heart of some questions. Yep. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, you guys good to go? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Let me make sure my recording looks good. Okay. Let's go in three, two, one. What's up, Internet? And welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm Reviews Editor Sherlyn Lowe. And today, we will be diving into our final thoughts on the new MacBook Pros, the Pixel 6, the Facebook Papers with Chris Bell, who's going to be joining us in a bit, um, all, all the major news. So stick tuned for all that. If you're digging the show, please be sure to like us and subscribe. Not like us. If you're digging the show, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes because that actually matters the most. And drop us a line at podcast at Engadget.com. We also live stream typically on Thursdays around 10 a.m. Eastern. So check us out on the Engadget YouTube page there. And before we get to all that news, I just want to say um, this is a special episode. 100 Woo-hoo. episodes. Woo-hoo. Wow. I'm 100 years old. No, mm-hmm. yeah. not that was the wrong thing. I should. Yeah. No, we're actually I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving room for the air horn because that is where the air horn was supposed to come in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If it was the there you go. Yeah, I can, there you go. Yeah, I can cut in. I can cut in space for the yeah, air yeah. horn. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, that's yeah. <laughs> That's a oh, no. major compliment. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get the first side, Julio. But a hundred episodes, that's pretty good. We don't normally see epi- you know, podcasts get that far. So congrats to Lynn and Ben and everybody who helped make this possible. Yeah, hey, course. we we made it. It's hard to congratulate yourself. I'm not Matthew McConaughey at the Oscars, okay? So oh, that was no. a that was a moment. I, I'm not trying to, I don't know if it's a, like a congratulations thing. I'm just glad we, we've been able to stick around for so long. And, and with the support of everyone that's tuning in, everyone that's listening, downloading, watching us, however you're engaging, it's great because people are like, oh, cool. You all are doing something good here. So yeah, for sure. I hope we are for you. I, I hope, hope we helpful. are. I hope we are. And uh, yeah, the audience is growing. We we have occasional sponsorship. So things are looking up at the Engadget podcast. And uh, I just wanted to throw this out to our audience. Um, the people listening to us now on the live stream and watching us. Mm. Let's start with a Q&A. Let's do a special audience Q&A to kick things off. And there are so many things people want to dive into. So Ben is going to collect some questions from people. But one question I just saw as we were kicking off the episode is Chiming Chung in the chat room asks, um, what is gaming like on the new MacBook Pros? And these are the ones with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips from Apple. And um, all I have to say is, is what gaming? Uh- it's, Ma- it's Max. I, I spent... Uh, $20 to buy Borderlands 3, which is one of the few like recent games and recent within the past couple of years that can actually run, like actually runs on a Mac. And uh, even on the M1 Max, um, the fastest chip, it ran like crap, right? Because that thing is being emulated from Intel over to, you know, the ARM uh, architecture that the M1 chips are based on. Uh, It was like, 15 to 20 fps you know like you can't play a game like that um this hardware is clearly powerful as we'll talk about but apple also has to encourage developers to start like making games that aren't just ports of all their ios games um sure all the apple arcade games work fine because that's what they're made for they actually work fine on the macbook air as well so they don't need the most demanding hardware around um, and they look pretty good on these computers but if you want to play steam games or you know big things um Fortnite still doesn't work because of their ongoing legal legal battles with Apple. Um, all those things will not exist on a Mac. So maybe go PC if you want to do some light gaming at all. 
Yeah. So we've got, uh, uh, some more. Go oh, ahead, yeah. Ben. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Some more general thoughts before we kick off the rest of the show. Uh, Chris Velasco in the chat is all like, happy 100, y'all. And I you know, don't know who that stranger is, but thank don't you. Know. Um, and another good general thought from Declan Flynn in the chat. What one tech idea over the last 100 episodes are we surprised did not take off? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really, really good question, Declan. Um, I don't think there's. Anything... I'm more surprised yeah. things did take off. It's more like, oh, I think we're mm -hmm. we're more skeptical than we are uh, optimistic, maybe <laughs> on this show. Uh I think between like episode one, two, and three, and now 100, I think it's kind of surprising how well foldables have come along. Sure. Um, yeah. Because. Right around uh, when we started, foldables had just started, and we were like, Ugh, "Like this is gross. Why would anyone pay to beta a device?" And now they're actually becoming a little more viable. I still think they're I gross. Like I still think they're too expensive, but you know, yeah, sure, more. I, I feel like that's a pretty typical evolution path for most new types of technology, though. For sure, I think. For sure. um, Another thing that hasn't really taken off, though, is like rollable TVs still aren't mainstream. mainstream. That's that's never gonna happen. That's that is never gonna absolutely happen. Absolutely never gonna happen. Yeah, I've seen it's, those it's things in those person. Things, yeah. yeah, we've seen the we've seen the pricing from LG. It was like what fifty thousand to hundred thousand. Nobody needs that yeah. stuff. So also, fine. Declan, <laughs> the last one hundred episodes is kind of a short time frame. Actually, it's... if you think a little, if you give me a little further back, <laughs> I can tell you like flexible batteries are something I wish had taken off, but they never really did. Mm. Graphene's been talked about for ever and like where are we on that yeah and then i, mean, I, I thought mm -hmm. it will be in everything every every laptop by now not tvs tvs they're pretty i think more mm -hmm. much more common now than before but there are there are a lot of computers um with quantum dot displays but certainly mini led has become the like thing mm -hmm. that has the been appearing yeah. more thing the go-to which is fine because that's actually it solves the bigger problem with lcds which is backlighting whereas qled was just like here, here are quantum dots in your display to make colors mm -hmm. look a little better like that that was always a little bit of a marketing hype um do want to say like when it comes to foldables um you know they're getting better but the real reason we were so hard on Samsung at the beginning was because they had no idea what they were doing. They were clearly paying, like making people pay to be beta testers for like a first gen product that was any other company would have like. You can yeah, say that of the, not refused the that. original Surface Duo as well, to be honest. You can say that of a lot of things is what I'm saying. You, you like can Lenovo, say that Lenovo's those are... dual screen yoga mm -hmm. tablet also yeah, yeah. was something like that. But the thing is like there are bad products and then there are things that just are broken, right? The original Galaxy yeah, Fold. Yeah, the duos, they're both, the, the original Galaxy yeah. Fold certainly like when people were peeling off the screen protectors yeah, yeah. and dust was getting broken. in the hinges, yeah. that sort of yeah. thing was pretty embarrassing for them. But like, there's also a lot of crap gadgets out there like mm -hmm. the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold, the, again, those, the original those didn't duo. Those fall apart. And those the new didn't, duo. Like, the hardware in those things, at least like, I think for the most part worked, right? You reviewed the duo, the issue was the software, right? Most, so, yes, so the Surface yeah. Duo's hardware was really nice, but uh, I mean, again, Mike. with the thing is that like, I don't want to defend Samsung too much because like it is, it was an expensive like experiment, but I feel like we use that same headline on a lot of things, right? Expensive experiment, mm. expensive experiment. I've seen a lot of yeah. our reviews go up like that. Because we can we can certainly fight about that. The yeah, nature of it. In a future uh, I don't episode, really want to fight about that I, I would say like <laughs> more than any other device in any re in recent memory. I I don't think we've seen that, and that was coming right off the Galaxy Note Seven, exploding batteries. To, like yeah, Samsung build quality I mean, was I guess kind I've of like a lot of different things that yeah. have done that. That's probably why. Yeah, you've reviewed a lot of anyway, Android no. devices. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so Josh I have a... said... Sorry, go ahead, Ben. Ben. Oh, okay. Well, I have a couple of uh, banked questions. One of them is from Gijo Augustin, which uh, who asks, is the iPhone performance core and the M1 and M1 Max core, are they the same or are they different? They're, I mean, it's it looks like they're different. They're all based on like the same architecture that Apple has been kind of building up. But the the M1 chips, the way they're actually designed, um, basically they're you know they're bigger. They can fit in more powerful cores, but also more GP cores than the the A series chips. Um, I haven't done like deep architecture dives into them, but it is 
it's basically like the upgrade you'd expect to power bigger screens and things like laptops. So whatever innovations Apple makes on the A series front could easily make their way over to the M chips. So yeah, they're all kind of related in that way. Okay, Charlene, you go. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I just you know saw a bunch of questions relating to Pixel Six that I wanted to say we'll get to in a little bit. Sure. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, I think you mentioned Josh Suchdeva, and uh, they had another question that I thought was interesting, which is, how can Sony make a hard comeback? Do you think they're even trying? I really they love can. their tech and phones, but their marketing is really disappointing. What do you think about that? Uh, I wrote a whole piece about that last year, where I, was like, I, for- I forgot the, even t- the title, but it was like, um, can, can Sony ever win back its, you know, consumer electronics crown? I, I, I don't, I don't really think it can, just because at right now, Sony is a company that is majority being successful because of the PlayStation and because of Sony uh, pictures. So, like, so they still have the Spider-Man stuff. Uh, PlayStation is the thing that's still making money for Sony. Everything else is kind of uh, gravy. And they also do weird things like those neckband speakers, which uh, I reviewed the first one. One of the more recent ones that they released, it seems like it's gotten better over time. Nobody needs neckband speakers. And certainly nobody needs neckband speakers that require uh, a breakout box that you have to plug in like audio connections into because it doesn't have Bluetooth. What are you doing? Um, It's a lot of stuff like that where Sony is a very old Japanese company and uh, they move slowly. They don't innovate as much anymore. Uh, Apple pretty much killed them as a consumer electronics company. So it's really all they have is PlayStation. All that's all they have. Maybe at some point they'll be able to like do something else. Um, They used to talk to me, you know, about products and stuff. And then I wrote that piece because it was their, I believe their 50th anniversary. Um, But it, it was a major 75th. It was a major like anniversary for them, and Sony just didn't want to talk to anybody. They had no news. They had nothing to say because they weren't doing anything, you know? So the most successful thing they've done recently is the PlayStation 5, and it's been super successful uh, on the gaming front, uh, but they still can't make enough, you know? I, I don't think a game console can keep a whole company alive. I, do you guys have any other thoughts? Sherlyn, like, I don't know if you have any Sony love from back in the day. I, I don't know if Josh like the other question is like specifically pertaining to their phone business or like everything, every other everything. aspect that you were talking about. Yeah. The phone business is where I'm a bit more familiar, right? With the Xperia phones. They tend mm-hmm. to be like super expensive, but they have very good display yeah. and camera tech. They, they failed in phones. To... Yeah. Yeah, they did. If if only because they they I don't know what they did wrong there. I can't even tell you because like yeah. they did what people generally do, which is go ham on their expertise areas, mm-hmm. which is for Sony cameras and displays. Yeah, why not? Sure. But I guess I- they just have too strong a competitor in Samsung. Also, Sony makes the sensors for every smartphone. Sony makes there, the like, sensors hey. for everybody. But here's the thing. Like, I don't I don't know if you were paying attention to phones in like the early 2000s, Lynn, but like the Sony Ericsson stuff pre iPhone was like the shit. Right. That that was the like really cool feature phones that you wanted. I had one. I had a candy bar one. And those were like the they had such cool tech. Um, and they looked really cool too. They were designed very well. Sony had such a great lead in like mobile tech. And then the iPhone dropped. And Sony was just like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It took them a while to like reassess and go Android. And even though they work in the components level, they produce the camera sensors and everything. Um, yeah, they could never quite make the the package because the iPhone was just like such a huge leap ahead of what they were doing and even other other companies could, could kind of come in and start building things that are just so much far ahead of whatever Sony could think of so I'm thinking of like HTC when they started making like cool Android phones you know um, they were the first uh, LTE the Thunderbolt was the first LTE phone in the US I believe or one of the first and then you get to like the HTC um, one which we love so much And you see like the culmination of smartphone design there, ideas that Apple and other companies eventually took. Sony was just like, we we got cameras, we got screens, you know? Yeah, those are for their phones. And but then like like you pointed out, and some people in the chat are rightly pointing out Mm -hmm. as well, like other aspects of Sony's business do really well, right? PlayStation, the wireless headphones, the audio stuff they do really well. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about like PlayStation, but their headphones are great. I'm talking about like big business, right? I'm talking about like a thing you look at and be like, oh yeah, that's a Sony product. I want that. 
Um, whereas Apple has had, killed them. I have a Sony yeah. TV. Holy shit! I mean, it was gift given. It was to given to you. They failed the in the TV. Like, go read that piece, everybody. <laughs> uh, and so in the yeah. comments, Kenny Ong uh, said a couple minutes ago that mm -hmm. mentioned like Sony phones with the Sony operating system came with a lot of bloatware, which was absolutely yep. true. That was, yeah, they didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't they know what was it. up. So that uh, piece, by the way, was called Can Sony Reclaim Its Former Glory? And you can find pretty much all of my arguments there. Like you bring up TVs, Sherlyn. Do you know what happened in the 90s? In the 90s, I don't Sony... know. I'm not stuck in the past, I guess. <laughs> I, I just got to say, learn. Y'all need to learn your history, especially for a company okay. as old as Sony, because they own the CRT world. The Trinitron screens were like the top of the world for a while. And then LCDs started coming out. And Sony was like, no, no, no. We can just ignore flat screens. We've got CRTs. And then they basically lag behind on all that stuff for the past, like for, for a long time. They never quite recovered from that. So, hey, Sony's in a lot of trouble. Go read my piece and um, let us know what you think Sony could do to kind of like come back. I don't, I don't know if it can, not in the way that it could like overtake Apple or Samsung or anybody. And we are going to be talking at least quickly about the Sony Xperia uh, a little bit later in this episode. Uh, did get a review unit, and I think it was Matt Smith who did the this review Matt, for that. Yeah. That's a different right? phone. Uh, yeah. That's a different phone. Oh, okay. Matt's Whoops. reviews of the One Mark III, and people are talking about the One. Um, okay. The new one well, that was announced. All right, that's, that okay. is my but, fault. But, then. That's also their fault for bad naming. Sony can't name anything. It's ah, very bad naming. Ah. I hate the Xperia one Mark mm -hmm. three like what and then if you yeah. write them out the numer the Roman numerals way is like one I I I like, I, okay I, I. cool their cameras are yeah, like could... A seven R series three yeah I could oh see God. the pain in Sherlyn's face when I got it wrong yeah so uh, yeah tell us what you think about Sony's phones or how yeah. Sony how you think Sony could come all the way back. Uh, send us your whole business plan. We sure, promise yeah. not to share it with <laughs> Sony. And I just want to say, I'm not. I'm not a total hater. I love the. Go read my review of the 1000 XM3s. They can get. They own certain markets really well. I just bought that, a yeah, Sony. Yeah, wireless audio. So we just said, yeah, and, and the bought, cameras are pretty fucking good. The cameras are pretty good. Um, they don't yeah. like own the market. Is the thing right? Like they're not. When we talk I mean, about they effectively who's... pushed Samsung out of that market. Samsung was trying to make like mirrorless things happen for a while. Barely, and they make smaller barely. And your pancake lenses and cameras. Samsung I know. tries Samsung to do everything. Had a moment yeah. and then it was, died. Yeah, all, it was like I a couple it. years. I, I I did buy the Sony A7C, which is like kind of a miracle of a camera because it's really compact. It's a full frame sensor. So like some of that stuff is certainly incredible, but that's for weird nerds, you know, and photography professionals. It's not products everybody is going to buy but uh yeah do we have any other questions and we can move on soon i mean we have a ton of other mm -hmm. questions but i think we should move on because people yeah. are asking about things we might be talking about we will be yes, talking about we later, will be like talking the about. fragmentation of android android 12l we are that is on our <laughs> list uh it's coming i know da Vinci love can we just uh that. just put it like audio of me laughing for five minutes as we talk about android 12l yeah all right I any other questions we, we want to hit Mm -hmm. I th well, uh, not a question for right now, mm -hmm. but I think it would be good to think about talking about M1 Pro, M1 Pro Max versus Intel Alder Alder Lake as Alder Lake talking, Alder Lake as we're talking about mm -hmm. MacBook Pro. So we'll ta I'll talk about MacBook that when Pro. we do Intel. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So let me just like close that segment. Love it, Julio's love it. Having too much fun. He's it's having so much more fun. fun than all of us. I'm thinking combined. of all the TikTok memes too. That are, that's using the Mario Kart sound, and I think that is my favorite TikTok thing right now. Um, uh, okay, let me just shout this out. <clears throat> Do you want to use your your audio, Ben, where you just closed off Sony as like the end? Or um, should I cap it off in another way? No, I think you should cap it off. I'm okay. recording my audio, but I think it would be better for okay. you to do it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you all so much. Okay, thank you all so much for your questions. And uh, you know what? I love doing Q&As. I love doing live Q&As. So I hope to like, we can make more time for this uh, for future episodes. As always, you can shoot us your questions at que As always, you can shoot us your questions at podcast at Engadget.com. 
Let's move on to our MacBook Pro reviews, which are the things that I think people just can't stop talking about. Once once um, certain people knew I was reviewing these things, I just got a lot of text. I got a lot of like DMs about like, what's up with these computers? Are they good? Are they really worth the price and everything? Mm -hmm. And um, TLDR, I think they are. I think they're fantastic. This is the new 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 uh, Pro and Max chips. Uh, you can kind of upgrade them either way. And the, the brand new like 16-inch redesign of the MacBook Pro. These computers are great everybody I, I don't know what else to say like if you want like a powerhouse machine if you want a machine that has like the power of a mac pro or like a high-end desktop from a couple of years ago these things will floor you um, my benchmark scores were kind of off the charts uh they blew away all the geekbench 5 scores i had this year mm -hmm. from all of the laptops we tested and that includes the intel um nook 11 extreme which is a mini desktop running a desktop chip like that is that shouldn't be happening with uh you know with chips in vaguely portable laptops uh I, I think like they are they have gotten heavier in certain in a certain way the 14 inch is three and a half pounds and the 16 inch is but it's like 4.7 to 4.8 depending on the chip you chose and before the last 16 inch model was i think around like 4.2 or 4.3 so these are bigger these are thicker they're chunkier um, they remind me a lot of the power books, as I mentioned last week, um, you know, kind of the old school design from Apple, but it's kind of everything. They're so fast. The screens are beautiful. They've got, um, it's the Intel retina, not Intel. It's the Apple retina XDR screens. So they support HDR. Uh, they have like very, very high peak brightness. They're beautifully, they're beautiful looking screens or they all have like mini led backlights. So you get like almost an OLED like experience from watching these you don't get to see the stuff in a in a normal backlight you don't see that like banding you do on cheap LCD monitors they're good they're perfect they're just really really expensive the 14 inch starts at $2000 uh the 16 inch starts at $2500 and that's kind of it right like i don't think they're replacing the 13 inch, they're certainly not replacing the 13 inch with the 14 inch. Uh, that earlier model is still available for $12.99. It's a lot slower. It doesn't have these new chips. It doesn't have like all the new ports and stuff and the screen is worse. So that's the thing. I really wonder what they're gonna do uh, with the 13 inch down the line because I didn't find that one to be a huge update over the MacBook Air M1, uh, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, do you, do you guys have any questions? Sherlyn, what do you think? Are you intrigued by these? Do you these? think it's mm -hmm. worth the the price difference, like the huge jump in price that we were it's discussing? It's not a, in like so. Episodes? This is the this is the main thing. It's not really a huge jump in price because the MacBook Pro 13 inch is still around. It is. It yes. still exists. There was never a 14 yes. inch before. Um, the 16 inch is only has only increased by one hundred dollars. So the 16 inch was so, always a really expensive computer. Yeah. I guess what I meant to say was, is it worth the price difference from the 13 inch to the, four? like, should I if, get, like, let's yeah. say I'm looking at two of them, the 13 and the 14. Yeah. Is that 700, I think, dollar difference? Do um, you edit like, like a ton of video? Do you like live and swim in no, 4K? I, I mean, personally, I don't, yeah. but let's yeah, say yeah. I do. Then you think it's worth it, right? Yeah. If, so you if live I edit in... a lot of video, I shouldn't go for the 13 inch? I think go read my review of the 13 inch, everybody. Um, it's a fine computer, but that ran the last year's M1 chip. It wasn't faster than the MacBook Air at all in my benchmarks. Uh, the only like real good thing is that one has a fan and the MacBook Air is completely passive. But if you want to do like actual work, if you want to like sit and like chug out, you know, push out videos, uh, do 3D rendering, uh, do a lot of like serious production work, these are the computers you need to buy. And at that point, then that price is actually kind of within reason. Um, the closest PC competitor to the MacBook Pro 14 inch is probably the Razer Blade 14 inch, which I reviewed um, a couple months ago. That thing starts at $1,800. So for this level of hardware and everything, you're paying a lot of money to begin with. Like that, they're within the spec of what people pay. Yeah, it seems like more along the lines of like what we're seeing from companies like Acer and Asus when they're targeting so-called creators with their creator series, like yeah. Acer's Concept D series. Yeah. Asus has the studio, the Pro Pro Studio. The Pro series. Studio, yeah. Uh, I think I can't remember what HP and Dell call theirs. I don't know I don't if they're know. making well, such high end. So for Dell too, like I just reviewed the XPS 15 
which I think is a good like PC competitor to the 60 inch MacBook Pro. And sure, to begin with, um, the Dell is cheaper, I think, for like an Intel i7 chip, um, you know, maybe comparable amounts of RAM storage. The XPS 15 is like $500 less than the MacBook Pro mm. 60 inch. But once you start bumping up that CPU, because you want a CPU that's kind of giving you the power that you would get from the MacBook Pro 60 inch, then the Dell becomes more and more expensive. Then it creeps up towards like 2300, 2400. Y yeah. It all, I, I think there's a lot of sticker shock around these things, but if you're in the market for this hardware, if you actually need this stuff for real work, um, these are the prices you're going to be paying. You know, it's, it's, it's tough out there, but these computers will last you a while. They're like rock solid mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, I remember you were saying that there was some questions from the chat earlier about gaming and you, you already talked about that, but like, is there anything else you want to point out? Uh, I mean, the camera notch. I, I a lot camera's of people are good. asking about that. The notch. Uh, so yeah, check out my review, everybody. I addressed all of this too, and we have a video review up on YouTube on our channel. Um, the notch, I think, is not a big deal. You see it in photos, and you're like, I don't want that ugly thing at the top of my screen. But the notch, if you've ever used a Mac before, the notch sits where the like menu bar is. So mm. that's area. That's an area of the screen you never touch unless you're dealing with like the file or edit menu or something like that. The notch is like right up there. Um, the notch completely disappears when you full screen certain apps, which is, uh, that's nice. It just kind of hides the menu too. So you could just also just like add a black or like a really dark wallpaper. And that just kind of hides the visibility of the notch. Um, I don't mind it just because you still have a lot of screens, real estate below it. Uh, you never use that space up top. And um, it's a much better camera. It's a 1080p camera. Yeah. So yeah, we've been asking yeah. for this for a while. Yeah. Should you should you buy this over a Mac, like a like a desktop Mac? There are no good desktop Macs now. So yes. Um, <laughs> it seems like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're waiting. I think everybody's waiting to see. They expected to see like a Mac Mini with the M1 mm -hmm. Pro and the M1 Max, and maybe we'll see something like that, or maybe they're waiting to like next year at some point to give us a refreshed MacBook Air. That one is still running the M1 chip um, and maybe we'll get Mac Mini along that. And we're still waiting for like whatever the redesigned Mac Pro will be. Who knows? But yeah, expect mm -hmm. faster chips down the line. At this point, what Apple laptops still use Intel chips? Do we like, are there any left? I don't, I have to go look at the things like you can still, I yeah. believe you can still buy. No, you can't buy the 15 inch anymore and no you can't buy the older 60 inch too so, so they're, all, they're all gone right Fully except for the mac pros the except for like you still have to right, buy a mac pro the, right and maybe the, right? the, the older mac, models that were yeah and maybe some mac minis you can find floating around i have to look and see what's available at apple mm -hmm. store but certainly the idea is that yeah we're we're going to move entirely away from intel at this point yeah i don't mm -hmm. know do you think intel should be worried I think Intel has been worried since last year, and we'll talk about that <laughs> with their new chips. But yeah, the, these things are super powered, super expensive. Um, they're the Mighty Max, everybody. Mm. So if you've been waiting and hankering for an upgrade, I'm looking at you, Ben. Um, these are kind of the ones you got to get. But also, yeah, expect to take maybe a small loan or pay for them over time, <laughs> you know, like something. Uh, is that, they're, is they're that like your me. one complaint about them? Like if there's one thing you they're have to complain about, is it? Yeah. They're expensive, and Mac hardware has always been expensive. A high end, yep. piece, a high end notebook has always like as great as like laptops have gotten and cheaper and stuff over the years. If you want power, if you want like actual power for production, you got to pay a ton of money. So hmm. that's the thing. You can't upgrade these because the RAM is kind of like in there in the system on a chip. So it's it's not as flexible as maybe a PC laptop mm -hmm. would be. But if you, you get what you pay for, certainly. All right. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> all right. I'm gonna throw it over to you, Sherlyn. Are we talking uh, AirPods three now? Uh, oh yeah. Or... Let me. Let's do AirPods. Let's do AirPods, and then yeah. I'll throw it back. <clears throat> also, over in Gadget, we reviewed the latest Apple AirPods. Billy still did that, and he calls them better in nearly every way. He gives them a high score of 88. These things look cool. I have not tried them, uh, but certainly, mm -hmm. if you're in the market for AirPods. They seem like a good deal. Um, I will say if uh, if you have weird ears like mine and you've had issues with AirPods in the, in the past, 
Uh, I don't know if these are going to be any better. The AirPods Pro still sound better. They use silicone tips. Um, mm. You know, th those still have certain benefits and they have bigger drivers too. So I, mm. I still reach for my AirPods Pro like every day because they're the really useful uh, headphones to have around. If I'm working outside and somebody comes up with a leaf blower in my neighbor's yard, mm -hmm. I could just throw them on and kind of like dull some of that noise. So, okay. you know. These things don't have that, but as AirPods, they seem really good. I uh, don't mind that they still have that little like stick hanging out of your ear look. Sure, but I think some people may not like it. I don't mind it. You um, have other you have other options. If you don't want that, you can go get yeah. a Jabra. You know, you could get um, Galaxy Buds. Like you, you've got a Pixel Buds. So mm -hmm. many options right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So yeah, speaking of Pixel. Trillin, what are your, what are your <laughs> final thoughts on the Pixel 6? I'm I'm so torn. I'm so torn. Um because I personally am in the phase of switching over my primary Android phone mm -hmm. and I'm like, "All right, I guess it's time to like main the Pixel 6s now." But I I don't I don't like the size of mm. either of them. And that's my main issue now. And I think it's been echoed in a lot of the YouTube comments that I see, a lot of the tweets. People, a, a lot of people agree that like we needed the, like a small baby pixel. Yeah. Um, with this year, the 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 regular Pixel Six is a six point four inch screen, and in terms of size, it's about the same as the bigger one, which has a six point seven inch screen, but mm -hmm. you know, no bezels. So like the smaller one has these ugly bezels too. So. <laughs> I know our, our managing editor, Terrence O'Brien himself, is thinking of like which Pixel 6 to get. And like he was like, oh, if the Pixel 6 didn't have those bezels mm -hmm. and was just smaller. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you're going to hear as main complaints about mm -hmm. these things. Um, my chiropractor slash sports therapist uh, <laughs> himself is looking to upgrade from a Pixel 2 uh, to a new Pixel. And he, he's been asking me the whole time. And he mm -hmm. was like, I was like, these are really good phones. <laughs> he was the first person to, to remind me that like the fingerprint sensor is like something very important to him. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who a lot of people have been asking me this, is it, you know, the fingerprint sensor is bad compared to Samsung and OnePlus phones that have mm -hmm. in-screen fingerprint sensors. But is it because it's slow or is it because it's giving false negatives or false right, positives? Right. Um, that's a question that was asked. And, I, you know, what I realized is that once I learned that I have to put my finger on it for like two seconds at a time, Ooh, <laughs> that's I, uh, I mean, two yeah. seconds is an exaggeration, maybe more like one second. Okay. Like I had to count once or something. Yeah. Um, but that the, once I figured out that I have to do that and be patient, mm -hmm. then I realized that actually it does work. It's just, it takes a while. It's not inconsistent. Mm -hmm. It takes a while. So, th so yeah. 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 yeah, that's the three main things to complain about these phones stacked up against the list of pros, which mm -hmm. start the first of all is its price. Like you really can't beat this price, right? Like you're starting at $600 for the Pixel mm -hmm. 6. And my biggest complaint about it is the fingerprint sensor is slow and it's a little big. I mean, like if you're not size sensitive, you, you definitely could get the Pixel 6 and have a really good time. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be great. The camera, so the camera features and a lot of the software features, which were some of the highlights, they're summed up in three words, like hit or miss. It really <laughs> depends on the situation. <laughs> magic eraser, oh my gosh. Sometimes it's true magic. Sometimes it's like, hold, and, and what I realized is mm -hmm. when Google is able to automatically detect things in the scene and wants to erase for you, it works amazingly. Can, can you erase like, those friends you don't like uh, who sometimes yeah. show up in your photos? Yes, the photo bomber thing yeah. is pretty good. I have a you, pile from yeah, our can... like CES trips and <laughs> oh yeah, I can't wait to delete all delete my photos with Trill in basically. So, but yeah, yeah, I was thinking same. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, but look at look at these comparison pictures mm -hmm. um, on my review on our review video, or you know, if you're tuning into our live stream, you'll see them on screen right now. Um, the magic eraser tool is pretty insane. Uh, when when it is able to detect people, it does a really good job. The mm -hmm. struggle is when you when it's when you're trying to erase something that is not already detected for you, um, then it has a harder time filling in the background with mm -hmm. something that's not so obvious. Um, one of the uh, hosts on Twit's network of podcasts, Ant Pruitt, 
he did a video mm -hmm. of uh, removing a chain link, a fence, not yeah, a chain link yeah. fence, but a fence in front of a dog with the Pixel 6 Magic Eraser. And I gotta say, the, the result looked not awful. You could still of, see there you was a fence see, there. Yeah, you like, it's see like a crisscross <laughs> pattern, but like a, a faint, sure, sure. sort of slightly pixelated version. I don't know. It's we're, funny, we're getting but... there. We're getting there. Yeah. I mean, Google's always been good at computational photography, I guess. Mm -hmm. And like their stuff is getting better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at face and blur as a tool, face and blur is one of the things that I was most impressed by. I It's basically mm -hmm. supposed to stitch um, pictures from the wide camera and the um, main camera when you're mm -hmm. shooting your subject that's like as it's as they're moving and it'll keep their faces sharp and clear mm -hmm. um, by by using the wide, more sharp picture to on top of the face, which is like, oh, OK. So when I was shooting our video producer, Brian O, as he was shaking his head in front of me, not at me, in front of me. Uh, <laughs> every shot, every single shot was crisp. Now, I will say that mm -hmm. it was not every shot that had face and blur applied in that scenario mm -hmm. because for some reason, I think just the shutter speed's really fast on these things too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Some of them just didn't have face and blur, but they were very clear. But seeing and looking at your photos, by the way, really makes yeah. me miss Prospect Park because you were clearly taking photos around Brian's, yes, Brian's apartment and I used to live yeah. like right, right near him, yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful in the fall. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. some of the that that was my favorite part of the testing was going to Prospect Park to shoot because mm -hmm. again, that's where you take a lot of pictures with your phone. Yeah. And like yeah. that was the best place to test them. I I did so <laughs> much testing for this phone. So much. <laughs> and 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 I wrote so many words. I, like my joke is that I almost got fired over how long my review was, but <laughs> we had to trim it just to make sure it wasn't going too far or like off yeah, like yeah. Engines or whatever. <laughs> but I say that like even in this podcast, I feel like there's still not enough time for me to get into everything. For sure. I would recommend just sending me your questions. Hopefully I'll Go be able look to answer Berlin's video all, review. But... It's a very yeah, nice the video, video review. I mean, mm -hmm. we cut the video review too. <laughs> It was going to be like a 20 minute video at some point. You know, you know we're not making a Pixel 6 documentary here. But yeah. Look, I might. That, you don't give me ideas, Devendra, because I might sure. make a Pixel 6 documentary with the Pixel 6. If people 6. Would actually oh watch gosh, technology yeah. documentaries, um, yeah, th those would be fun things to make. Yeah. People, people watch them when they're on Netflix, I guess. I got to call up yeah. Netflix. That's, that's what I got to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, yeah, do you like. I know you're not much of an Android phone owner, um, but did you have any like anything that jumped out at you when you were looking at the marketing stuff for Pixel Six or the or the keynotes that yeah. you were interested in? I mean, I got I got to remind you, Sherlyn. I've been testing Android phones. Sure, when, yeah. When, when you when you were in like journo school, like, you know, like <laughs> Android's come a long way. It's come a long, come way. a long way. I was I was I was there at the beginning to kind of see so many things and. It is really fascinating to see like how far Google has come. Certainly, mm -hmm. I've seen like several failed attempts at flagship yes. phones from Google to the Nexus line uh, came and some went. Of the Nexuses were good, but yes, they, they were good. Coming. They were good yeah. phones. The Nexus yeah. Four, I think, was like really, really hot. Yeah, um, and that it's competition crazy. back in the day when like yeah, a lot of cool features immediately came to Android and didn't like it took iPhone forever to even yes. get LTE and stuff like that. Yes. Um, it was really cool to see Android grow up. I think. Over the past couple of years, things seem to to get maybe a little dull just because mm. Samsung is such a monolith. Like Samsung just comes in, dominates. became the flagship. Yeah, dominates mm. is the Sony of the you know Android yeah. world. Basically, they're the one everybody's following. Samsung is like, we want big phones. Everybody wants big phones, and then everybody start making big phones, and that's like think, kind yeah. of the key. That's the key yeah. of when a company becomes a consumer electronics leader, right? Everybody's starting to follow what they're doing. The fold. Kind of, kind of the same thing. Like they're they're trying new things. Whereas Google has been sitting like, Pixel phones are cheap. I guess like they're fine. Like it just feels like well, they they've been kind of treading water. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I, I guess, but I think with mm -hmm. since so so Samsung sort of started to dominate in my opinion from the S5 onwards. Yes, where absolutely. like they introduced mm -hmm. water resistance, and I was like, wait, what the hell? We can make our phones water resistant now? And mm -hmm. then it was like, mm -hmm. okay. And then LG yeah. died. RIP. LG died. died. RIP. HTC died. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then here's Google chugging along. And and since the Pixel 3, I feel like Google has been clearly aware that actually yeah. it offers a lot of benefits through its software. Mm -hmm. um, 
And as long as it can get all the basics sorted on hardware, it mm -hmm. can really offer you super powered software and offer a very unique selling point that Samsung can't. And I think that mm -hmm. there's a little bit of like a conflict of interest there, obviously, because sure. like, you know, Google provides Android to Samsung, so it can't really like make some I mean, features. Android is open and, source, and you know, Samsung like well. Samsung is open to it's it's kind of like the Windows situation, right? And right, right. the Windows situation exactly. was fine until Microsoft started making their own computers. And then like some of that conflict started happening. So Yes, exactly. Yeah. And this is and this, mm -hmm. I mean, Google's been making their own phones for a while, so it's like not yeah. a huge deal by this point because they figured out what to do. There's Pixel UI. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Pixel UI is, I think, what stands out for me with Pixel phones. I love Pixel UI. And with the Pixel 6s, Google also offers some AI stuff. Like the voice typing is actually mm -hmm. really good. It just needs okay. to learn where better to insert punctuation. <laughs> um, translation is incredible. That translation, like, I mean setting aside the quirks of translation engines to begin with mm -hmm. the fact that none of them can get colloquialisms right none of them can mm -hmm. get you know away from sounding formal and stilted yeah. um just the fact that it's built into so many places and and works so quickly that tensor processing unit on the tensor chip mm -hmm. is insanely fast for all of these tasks oh, like yeah. it's just all the voice recognition all the translations mm -hmm. happening really quickly on these phones if you like those features Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a real kick out of this phone, but like I, I don't use mm -hmm. translation a lot in my life, so who knows yet? I will the, say part mm -hmm. of yeah. Go ahead. The Tensor Chip is really interesting. I just, yes. I just want to put this out there because that is like where Google's like, oh, we can do this, we can build this, we can do our own unique things. There's yeah. some like AI processing and stuff in there that nobody else has yeah. really. So yeah. that's interesting, but I it agree. involves. It involved Google like literally making the brains of the right. phone to make their phones interesting. So not and everybody you know can what? do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's surprising is that like um, just to compare, we ran uh, Geekbench 5 on the <laughs> uh, iPhone 13, so A15 Bionic, uh, mm -hmm. Pixel 6, so Pen Tensor. And then uh, the Surface Duo was the closest phone I had with the Snapdragon uh -huh. 888. So I ran uh -huh. it on the 888 as well. And like the Tensor, despite having two X1 cores, the prime cores, was the slowest of the lot on mm. the results. Mm -hmm. uh, it had like a 2800-ish score on Geekbench CPU. Mm -hmm. uh, not compute. I think compute, it might have might get better just because. But but on CPU, it lost mm -hmm. to both the Bionic, uh, A15 Bionic, and the Snapdragon 888. So A15 yeah. was be the best score, mm -hmm. 4800 something. Uh, and the, the Snapdragon 888 got like 3600-ish mm -hmm. or 3800-ish. And Google came in like a thousand. That's, that's weird. That, so. I will say, like, that's and weird. as somebody who runs a lot of benchmarks, to benchmarks aren't everything. Everybody oh, like sure, it's a yes. it's a standard to say like I can run this fast, okay. But if Google can also build you know a chip that can run fast enough, but also offload the work to do like camera processing and voice processing yeah. and stuff, that won't show up in the benchmark. Like they have. That's what I was yeah, about yeah, to lead yeah, into, yeah. which is that the thing is that like, but all of that camera processing that's really yeah. fast. Like if you like look, okay, so score to score, right? The Snapdragon 888 on the Surface Duo 2 mm -hmm. higher than the um the Tensor's uh, 2000 something, mm -hmm. but the Surface Duo 2's camera was so freaking slow. Whereas with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, I was just it was flying. Just I was in. taking pictures. Yeah. 20 in a second, I can tell you, like, it's insanely fast. And, mm -hmm. like, anything to do with AI, anything with voice translation, voice recognition, all just happen really quickly. So, yeah, to your point, and the point that I was getting to is that, like, that doesn't, I don't think Geekbench results take into consideration things like the TPU and ISP performance, sure. at least mm -hmm. not in the general score sense. So, so I'm willing to set aside the scores. And, and, and for its first chip, I think mm -hmm. Google did well. Sure. I think that, like, anyway... <laughs> Tensor, Speed, there you go. That's experience. Your, yeah. Like yes. when we judge yeah, products too, like the yeah. way it feels in your hand, the way, like the actual responsiveness of when you're using it, I think sometimes does matter more than the benchmark. Um, so yeah, yes. it's worth considering. So, yeah. so um, the final thing I want to say is that there was this mm -hmm. funny moment when um, Brian and I, Brian speaks uh, Korean and understands German. I mm -hmm. speak Mandarin and understand a whole bunch of other things. Um, so we were like, okay, I'll, try, I'll do some translation uh -huh. examples for this uh -huh. video. Chinese to English, great. Korean to English, great. Korean to Chinese? <laughs> I, neither of us could make head or tail. Of the other <laughs> it was like, it was like, in Chinese, we say, <laughs> Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, like the chicken head doesn't meet, match the tongue's 
the duck's tongue or tongue <laughs> duck's mouth. It's just saying it's just uh-huh. you, you're not you're not understanding each other basically, and it's mm-hmm. uh that uh, yeah. yeah. Anyhow, they're, they're making, funny. it's nice to see they're making progress. Like I think. Apple kind of needs a dedicated Siri chip because I swear, mm. I any time, mm-hmm. even no matter which Apple device I'm using, Siri is just so dumb, so dumb. Like I, yeah. I, I shout, I shout, hey, Blanky. I shout her name a lot for like random things. Yeah, Siri's like sitting right next to me. Nothing, never responds. Yeah, never yep. like it's never. And then when I do it, sometimes the thing in front of me doesn't hear it but the ipad across the room starts responding I'm like no stop you should be smart enough to know this i will um, i yeah. will say i have the same exact thing yep. with the assistant at home i have mm-hmm. nest audio speakers and i have the, the smart display at my kitchen Everybody i'll be standing in front this. of the yeah. right everyone they need to understand mm-hmm. that like we yes some of us live in big houses but some of us <laughs> live in tight spaces uh, and i you know have a lot of devices try. Uh Yeah, it did the whole like tweak your sensitivity thing. I made the smart display sensitivity Mm -hmm. like the lowest of the low. And it still can hear me from all the way like in my bedroom where the Nest Audio just won't hear me. I don't even understand what's going on there. It's weird because it's like you want that. You want that. You You want want them to be be able to hear you. Yes. But if you have multiple devices, you want it also to be smart enough to be like, okay, the one I'm holding in my hand should be the thing you're hitting and not the thing over there. Anyway, these are all problems everybody has to solve. And lots um, of problems. Lots of problems. I'm happy to hear the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro sound good. Sound pretty exciting. If I didn't um, push my wife away from Android last year, because that just makes our family life and communicating so much easier, um, I would have gotten her one of these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think she would have loved it. But, you know, it's okay. She's on your, okay. your family plan now. Fam- I mean, family plan, the blue chat bubbles, iMessage. By like, family it's... plan, I meant, like, your family ecosystem. Well, yeah. also my family, like, I Apple plans and whatnot. Like, we can mm-hmm. share subscriptions. You know, we can share things in the way that Apple and Android quite, uh, can't quite yet. So You can't cross the boundaries yet. Not at all. And uh, maybe that's why we'll never see iMessage on Android. Like, Apple knows oh, what it's got. And R. this R. is how it gets people to move over. R.I.P. R.I.P. Let's take a pause yeah, here. We can. Uh, can we go to other news? Yeah, let's go into other news. We can, do we want to do Q&A or just dive into other news? Or Let's go for It's 10.53. We'll have time. Okay. We'll probably have time for Q&A. Like, in, uh, yeah, because we we're yeah. going to get through other news. Like, there's mm-hmm. not as much other news as there has been in the past. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, working on. Wait, where did... We can talk about that Cowboy Bebop trailer that made yeah. me uncomfy. Are you well, are you excited it, about that? I hate I have honestly not liked a lot of the early footage, like the that re- weird like preview video they put out, but I like the trailer. So we'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mm-hmm. I realized that I didn't drop needs- this in the show notes, but we talked about uh-huh. it on our pre-production meeting. So what, dude? The URL in now. No, okay. Android 12L. Android, yeah, 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 that's fine. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna kick off other news. That was a cartoon needs to be live action. It does not, but then w- let's have this talk on the show uh i'm gonna throw it to other news and i'll throw it to you for sure play cool let's move on to some other news and we've got a couple tidbits of like chip news and os news today why don't you kick it off sherlyn yeah um uh, this week ios 15.1 was released uh not only did it bring with it Share play on Fitness Plus, which will allow you to group workouts with your friends. I'm so excited to test it out. So, 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 so excited to test it out with um, uh, UK Bureau Chief Matt Smith. But also, it brought about just share play in general. As mm-hmm. a recap, share play is that thing where you can call your friends over FaceTime and watch Ted Lasso together on the screen. And it's so much fun. And you can you watch TikToks together. I had a briefing with Apple this week. Uh, to to preview some of the apps that are coming to get uh, to share play and uh, just ended up writing a guide about it so you guys mm-hmm. can uh, check out engadget.com for that it's just how to how to share play on iOS 15 but I appreciate it uh, it's hard yeah it, yeah it's it's just a new thing that we all sort of should learn like what the functions and the controls are I thought it's like it's a brand new function um, I didn't know actually that when you were screen sharing mm-hmm. uh, over share play to someone your your the person on the other end can zoom in to things on your screen like that you're sharing. Huh. Um, that's the only thing they can do, but uh-huh. they can. So like can. if you have something Hide yeah, your if chats. You have something hidden in a pixel somewhere, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can zoom in and see it. Close so those bad browser tabs, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, close all your tabs. Um, but they can't they can't see your yeah. alerts. They can't like do your hentai research elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. That was the thing that happened on Twitter. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I forget no. who it was, but yeah. Research. Okay, sure. Somebody was uh, like, no. they posted a screenshot and there was like hentai in the tab. And he was like, I was just looking, I was looking up what hentai was. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it <laughs> means. Okay. I didn't turn on tentacle <laughs> porn for like anyway. Yeah. Um, hey. Uh now I got distracted. But I yeah. wrote this guide mostly because why is screen sharing over SharePlay going to be good? Because it's gonna help you. Or those of us who need to tech support over All your parents. miles and miles of land. Yep. Yeah. I don't care who it is. Parents, <laughs> kids, neighbors, relatives, whatever it is. You got to do tech support. This could be a good tool. The thing is, you got to first teach them how to use SharePlay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> share with you. So that's... here's the guide. Just tell them to read the guide. That's great. That's what I'm going to do great. to my parents. I'm like, can you just read this before I help you with anything? And they're going to be like, I have to read what you wrote. Gross. Yeah, my parents are no. My parents actually beg me to to share my work with them because I'm I never. I'm just like no, yeah. don't look at the videos. Anyway, don't tell them about Onita, Twitter and Onita. everything. Onita. <laughs> Onita, it's actually uh -huh. anyway. Uh, so there's iOS 15.1. Uh, Apple Apple's very cool update that brings. I mean, by cool, mm -hmm. I mean the feature SharePlay. I think is very SharePlay cool. seems yeah. really cool, and um, yeah. also SharePlay for Apple Fitness Plus, so you could do it with friends too. That's fun. Yeah, group workouts up to thirty two people, y'all, and uh, not everyone's <laughs> stats will be on screen all the time, but you, I mean, you get to see your friends sweat it out, and whoever's the loudest will be <laughs> on the tile uh, as active speaker. Okay. In the PIP, so uh, okay, cool. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, so. Check it out. I mean, there's quite a, a lot of little nitty gritty things in there, right? Like Bonita, you all have to subscribers. You all have to be uh, have the app on your phone. I had to install TikTok to do this demo, Devendra. I, I don't. I don't understand it. the TikTok hate, but yeah. I don't hate it. I'm just like I don't. I don't use it at all. So um, TikTok could be your ticket to success, Lynn. Embrace I mean, it. I'm already. That's true. A lot of people. I don't know. We'll see what the yeah. next big thing is. Yeah. I also well, downloaded. <laughs> sorry, the NBA app. To, to check this out it also works with the nba app so you can okay. watch live games on your phone or tv with your with, or your ipad with whoever oh and you can turn off your camera and your microphone so you can go take a toilet break but still remain in the conversation please remember to do that i don't please i'm do. not a fan of when people forget to do that during group chats um speaking of os updates <laughs> there's something i think you've been waiting for coming to android from google uh, i i wasn't waiting for this because i wasn't expecting we talk about it so announced. often but yeah i know well we complain about android on larger screens a lot and yep. i think google somewhere heard us they were like oh crap the engadget podcast specifically yeah yeah they're like <laughs> we they're really really, really giving us heat for this yeah <laughs> <laughs> we really don't want Charlene or davinja to be mad so mm -hmm. <laughs> this week it announced android 12 l Android 12 L, the L stands for large, I'm assuming. And uh, it's basically designed for different screen sizes, sort of the way Windows 10X was supposed to be cognizant of different states and screen sizes. Anyway, uh, Google's pitching this as for larger screens and foldable <laughs> screens. So not only will it have, you know, two column settings mm -hmm. panels and two columns notification shades when it detects that your screen's wider than 600 dips, um, it'll be able to also, well, it'll enable developers to know mm -hmm. when the hinge is sort of slightly folded and, you know, let their apps make use of that so-called natural separator. Um, it'll also be adding a taskbar, making it look a lot more like Chrome OS. Um, and this taskbar will not only uh -huh. make it easier for you to just find your more frequently used apps, but also... Um, split screen more easily by just dragging and dropping these apps onto the screen. It looks good. Funny thing is, mm -hmm. it looks very similar to some of the things that other companies like Samsung have had to do to uh -huh. make Android look nice on a bigger screen. They had to build it themselves, yeah. Yes. So now Android's baking <laughs> that in. I saw a comment on our YouTube chat earlier uh, asking if it is more fragmentation of Android. I don't feel like this is fragmenting, if only because it's 12L is sort of like built into 12 mm -hmm. and it really all these features only kick in when they detect a certain type of screen width. So it's still there, you just won't mm -hmm. see it on a phone. Yeah. yeah. Um so it's still Google, Google, part of what Google thing, needs yeah. to do this. Like this is exactly yes. what we were complaining about is that Android 
for the past decade, oh. this is 10 years too late, but for oh the past decade, Android has basically been like, well, you got a big screen, you got yep. big Android. That's it. Yeah. Like they didn't do anything <laughs> different to make Android yeah. work well or seem nice on tablets. And it just seems like mm -hmm. complete negligence on Google's part to like let let this market completely run away, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, like maybe <laughs> Android tablets stand a chance now. Like Samsung sure hasn't given up making them because Samsung also just made software to try and make that work. Samsung was like, all right, Dex, we're gonna we're gonna give you Dex, y'all. And then yeah. nope, that was just not great. I mean, I think Dex is still going to stick around because Dex does offer some different things. Dex offers yeah. a smart screen to begin with, uh, a homepage. I mean, uh, that looks by Dex. Do you mean the thing where you plug into a monitor? Well, Dex or... also exists as a mode on tablets that right. you can turn okay. on and off. Yeah, or if you attach a keyboard to a tablet, it'll come up Dex mode. Um, but yes, that is that is what I'm referring to. But I mean, Dex also offers that like a, a more desktop looking interface, also like resizable windows um th that like that like are floating panels mm -hmm. not just like split screen resizable um windows but this is <laughs> this is the start i think there's a long way to go for android i think there's things they could learn honestly from samsung who weirdly enough has so much more experience in trying to make android work for larger screens come the F why on. why like, is samsung the one investing in all this stuff when right. google's right there what are you doing google uh, I think anyway you're yeah. Sorry, to just close out yeah. that thought, this year it seems like Google is realizing Samsung's been doing a lot of the work that it should have, uh -huh, especially uh -huh. with the Wear OS side of things. Um, they teamed up with Samsung to make some of that work. Now they're doing 12L where it looks like they're learning that tablets deserve a better UI. And maybe they'll look to Samsung again on, yeah. on 12L to learn a bit about. But I am encouraged. Like This is a good first step. There's more that can be done. There's a lot that ha developers have to do to make their apps work with 12L as well. Oh Not my a God. lot, but like they have to do yeah. some work. I, c I could just so imagine, like, I actually I think a fun dream job would be just like being a Google product manager, but with like ultimate power and just like going in there and be like, what are you guys doing? What you Tablets, <laughs> do Android tablets, do something more here. Like, let's just make this work. Um, I, I, I feel like they I, all yeah. they need a kick in the pants or something to kind of make this happen. So I guess Samsung has been that kick in the pants to Google for the past couple of years. I, I yeah, I'm I'm friendly with some of the product managers, and I don't. I don't I care. All I don't care. Focusing. They all. No, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, what I mean is they're all focusing on their own things. So maybe yeah, they just exactly. needed someone on top of tablets for like they needed someone. They needed to create a role um, to, to, to synergize yeah. and uh, visionaries, what's speed designers. I, I there, there needs to be somebody yeah. like, yeah, Visualize. point over here and be like, we need to do this. We need to go there. Yeah. Whereas I feel like Google Catalyze. has done. Catalyze. That's the word yeah. I was looking for. Yeah. 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 Catalyze. Catalyze uh, the process. So, so annoying. Well, anyway, talking about companies who, that are have been kind of disappointing for years right. and you're trying really hard to compete. Let's talk about Intel's oh. 12th gen CPUs. <laughs> and they just announced these things. Um, they're just called the 12th gen line. Uh, but these are the Alder Lake chips we've talked about mm -hmm. over the past few years. This is their first attempt at doing a hybrid design. So similar to basically what ARM has been doing for the past decade, again, uh, on the mobile side, these things have up to eight uh, P core, performance cores, and up oh, to shit. eight E cores or efficient cores. So at the at the high end, the 12900K has 16 cores in total, but it's like half and half, eight performance, eight E. Um, and it is, it is a combined chip. It is a new way of thinking of how an Intel CPU works. Um, they mm. tried this hybrid design with their Lakefield chips, uh, I think last year, it didn't really end up in too many machines. Um, but this thing, this is their next big stab. It is based on the um, Intel 7 architecture, which again, we talked about this a couple of months ago. They mm -hmm. renamed their entire design process. So Intel 7 is actually their like upgraded 10 nanometer design. It's, it's a whole thing. I will say, um, looking at the numbers we're getting from Intel around these things, um it does seem good it does seem like this this hybrid design is smart especially for an os like windows where there are a lot of like background processes and things where it's like okay put the put the weaker chips over here let them just like mm -hmm. churn out this work where the high powered ones can focus on the game or the encoding or whatever you're doing um intel claims p cores can perform up to 28 percent faster 
then it's 10th gen Comet Lake chips and the E-cores. The E-cores are basically just the 10th gen chips um, with like no upgrades overall. And I think like they're just like saying there are a lot of uh, big upgrades overall. Uh, the 12th gen chips are up to 19% faster overall. Intel claims um, the 12900K is 50% faster than mm. last year's 11900K. Uh, in multi-threaded performance while using less power. So it is a whole new way of thinking. They don't just have like eight cores working really hard at high power. Right. And the 11 and chips were really, really hot too. So that those got a lot of criticism. Now they could be like, okay, let's put some stuff on the E cores. Let's put some stuff in the P cores. Um, let's kind of work together to kind of do a lot of concurrent tasks. So especially when it comes to multitasking, they're saying these things are going to be a big upgrade. Uh, mm -hmm. A 50% jump you know at a lower power level is pretty wild to me and uh gaming as well they're saying like um 30 percent better than the 11900k in uh in a game like uh troy a total war saga um some big benchmarks all around okay. um yeah just I, big numbers yeah i'm not as familiar with like intel architecture is this the first time they're using this sort of big little design um they so they've talked about it for a while and i think last year i mentioned they they had the lakefield chip and that i think that was just for like really low powered uh laptops and stuff it wasn't really okay. in too many devices um but yeah this is big little basically yeah and uh yeah. it seems like it's a big upgrade overall the real question is um <clears throat> what does this mean when comparing it to like the apple chips right like what does this mean mm -hmm. compared to m1 and everything mm -hmm. and uh you know, that's that's where things are going to get confusing. Like, I think um, there is a benchmark leak that suggests the 12900K, which is the fastest of these new chips, is um, is faster than the, than the M1 Max, you know? Oh. But the M1 Max chip is, a, is still a laptop chip. It's still, like, a much lower wattage, a power-sipping right. chip. Uh, once Apple brings that design over to, like, the Mac Mini or a Mac Pro, I, I still feel like Intel is going to be a little toast. Um, yeah. The benchmarks we saw from Intel also, um, they they showed us AMD benchmarks before AMD and Microsoft fixed some of the bugs with those chips mm -hmm. in Windows 11. So there may be some slowdown there. I'm still, I'll wait to see if like they give us any new benchmarks. And honestly, I just want to get a hold of these chips in some machines soon and test them out. Uh, they seem like a big deal. So if you waited yeah. on upgrading, if you didn't upgrade to an 11th gen chip, I think you lucked out because those things were kind of... Uh, they weren't, they just like weren't decent upgrades. And in some mm. cases, they were even slower than 10th gen chips. Um, so, mm. you know, kind of a waste. Uh, 12th gen looks good. We'll be keeping an eye on everything. And uh, as usual, what happens is that Intel announces stuff now by CES time, by like January and we'll February, AMD, them, AMD is going to be like, hey, here's our new new stuff. And <laughs> Intel's going to be scrambling. Um, this back and forth between Intel, AMD, and uh, Apple now i think it's really exciting and it shows like the chip industry is heating up we're going to see some really cool stuff happening because of this competition i think that's ultimately mm -hmm. a good thing for consumers and yeah. uh yeah I, I don't know do you have any thoughts Sherlyn? like are you I mean, excited to see intel try something different i yes definitely i think it's like big little architecture makes a lot of sense to me in general just like oh why not um i mean i've never really given it much thought on like something like a laptop right like what mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what task would you relegate to an e-core but maybe it's playing music maybe it's that whole like detecting if like trying to keep your mm -hmm. machine always ready to respond to you thing yeah. or mm -hmm. you know because on phones it makes a lot of sense phones are constantly sensing all kinds of different things and and doing a lot of things that are low power but like mm -hmm. not necessarily like running all the time um but I, it's it's going to be nice to see how that performs mm -hmm. on laptops it's especially like, especially when it comes to true multitasking, right? Like yeah. playing a game and streaming over OBS at the same time on the same right. machine. And um, as Intel is saying the 12900K is around 84% faster while playing Mountain Blade 2 uh, and streaming over OBS compared to the 11th gen chip. Mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, 47% faster nice. while multitasking Adobe Lightroom Classic and Premiere Pro. Um, big numbers. And yeah. You talk to a lot of streamers, especially people who do this professionally, like our video producer, yeah. Julio. Um, yeah. You need to have two computers. You need to have one computer yeah, just for video, right. one computer for playing the game. That's not feasible for everybody, I think. So right, right. 
this new design kind of opens the door for more flexibility and true, yeah. true multitasking. So yeah, we'll all be right. keeping an eye out for all that. Yeah. Hey, hey, speaking of companies that are uh, struggling to remain relevant. In Love these uh, segues. Yeah. <laughs> They're all working really well. Yeah, I know. I just borrowed yours, copy and paste it right here, but uh, that are uh, not doing so great compared to their competitors, though. Uh, Sony this week had a bunch of news. We we all know that Sony was going to announce something soon, and it did the Xperia Pro 1. This is the follow-up to the Sony Xperia Pro from earlier. I almost said last year. That's why I paused. Uh -huh. But it was mm -hmm. is the follow-up to this year's Xperia Pro. It was announced at the start of the year. It was $2,500 and was a phone that was just for video pros, it's mm -hmm, it's really mm -hmm. just like stuff to the guts with, like stuff to the brim with, with a lot of good video features. This time around, the Xperia Pro One, uh, the most attention grabbing thing about it is its one inch sensor that is oh, far from the RX one hundred series. That's a big RX deal. RX one hundred seven, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's insane. How? What the hell? The Pixel Pro, they're all boasting about their one over one three inch <laughs> sensor. I'm like, okay, yep. this is a one inch, like. It's an mm -hmm. RX 100 in a phone. In a phone. Um, which is, that's why it's a big deal, right? It's it's also got 2.4 microns uh, size pixels compared to the Pixel 6 Pro, which is 1.2 microns. Mm -hmm. This is twice the size. Yeah. Um, which, I mean. So you can get like real bokeh you know, from this uh, from this lens. Like you could do some real so pixel gorgeous. work. Yeah. yeah. Really, oh yeah. my gosh. I mean, the RX 100 series is one of my favorites in it's the great. point and shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, Pro-ish level of point and shoot anyway. It's, mm -hmm. it's really good. The lens is on that, it's good, but we'll see, right? So this one has, um, excuse me, uh, Sony's like imaging processors. So it's got like 20 FPS uh, burst shooting and then autofocus, like, auto exposure enabled. So like, oh man, this is taking me back to the days when I covered cameras and reviewed mm -hmm. them. But all of mm -hmm. the all of those specs, right? Very high up there. Uh, 24 millimeter lens between mm -hmm. f2 and f4 apertures. Um, I mean, and then it's got what yeah. a Snapdragon 888, which we just talked about. It's a very powerful. Yeah. Uh, I will say the people which, watching us on video right now, this, this is a different phone, actually, right? The oh, you mean the the stream on? The, yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not actually looking at our <laughs> video feed right now. Perfect. The Pro One, <laughs> yeah, the Pro One looks uh, a little different on the back. It's like this black. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got a different finish from its regular Xperia phones, too. I will say uh, people might be confused because this week we also published our review of the Xperia 1 Mark III, which so is confusing. Still Stop. Phone. Right. Still an expensive phone, but uh -huh. not the great, not the like $2,500 pro level phone that we're talking about right now that uh, Sony announced. The 1 Mark III review that we published this week by, by Matt Smith is... It's just another one of Sony's Xperia yeah. One. It's phones. a one, but it's not a pro phone. It's, it's just all pro. so And confusing. it's Mark Three. Mark Three. Just in case you were thinking it was Mark Dell. I'm sorry. I meant Mark One. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Mark Dell being our one of our regular viewers listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a very intriguing phone. It's just not made for everyone, right? At twenty five hundred dollars. I mean. It's well, this thing is eighteen hundred dollars, right? In the US yeah. for eighteen hundred. Yeah, twenty five hundred was the original pro starting price. Right. This right. is now going for eighteen hundred dollars, which, like, I guess is the same price as the Z Fold three. That's how much I pa I paid almost. for a full frame compact camera, you know, for pretty right. much that price. So, like, give the camera yeah. quality of this is that good? I might just buy that and go to CES with. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to yeah. drag around my yeah. DSLR anymore. Anyhow, Anyhow, worth uh, worth keeping an eye on. I'm I'm pretty sure we will mm -hmm. be calling this into review. Uh, sure. We don't have it on hand yet. Is there? There's I, no zoom. Is there? I feel like there's no mechanical zoom from what I. I don't think see. there's an optical. Just, yeah. If there is, it would be one of those folded mirror ones. But I don't see. No. Uh, yeah, it's not. So. Mm, fixed I mean, lens. Yeah. I. Yeah. F fixed. Mm -hmm. But there are um, extra additional lens op uh, camera options. There's a 50 millimeter telephoto on the side, and then it has an ultra wide option as well. So it's like a triple camera system. Um, but, you know, people apparently wanted a setup that matched their collection of prime lenses. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why they went with a non zooming uh, main lens. And then you have options for zooming if you need it. 50 millimeters is pretty impressive. I think. Yeah. So there you go. That should get you like, I don't know, depending on how to do it four times. I don't know. I think that was close to the pixel. Anyhow, we will be reviewing that. We'll get you the picture samples. We'll we'll put someone we'll good see. on that review because I don't, I don't know if I want to be. 
a good, a good camera nerd. Uh, maybe James. Yeah. We shall see. Probably J Steve. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you know. We got check we got out all our people. reviews, and we've we've got a lot of folks who like specialize in different things. So yes, you know. We have got so yeah, much content out there. Their respective Rounding um, out the news, yes. right? Go ahead. One one more thing. Oh Dune part two. Woohoo! <laughs> Dune part two, and uh, I had mentioned last week that the um, I think one of the it has been confirmed this week. I just want to say that, but yeah. I mentioned last week that probably the worst part of the evil news Dune is that. It kind of just ends and we had no idea if they would even make part two. Like, don't give me this beautiful world and these mm -hmm. great actors and stuff and just like drop it, um, which has happened before for so many franchises. I'm thinking of like the, the time they uh, did The Golden Compass with Nicole Kidman mm -hmm. and Daniel Craig, like just end it because that movie wasn't popular oh enough. God, um, so, yeah, Dune, Dune part two coming October 20th, 2023. So Confirmed. Good. I feel like they just had to. They they probably just want to like push people to go to the theater and be like, I, yes. I don't know if we're gonna make yeah. this if you yeah. don't actually go Before see it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they I, I had, refused to confirm it. Yeah, I had no doubt in my mind they were going yeah. to do it because of the hype. Because of like, mm -hmm. I mean, it seemed like it was gonna be a great production anyway. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you're right. They were trying to trying to make sure people went out and saw it to, to mm -hmm. clinch this. The Clinton's second part. And but it's, yes. it's done well in theaters. Like it is the best uh, simultaneous HBO Max and theatrical yeah. premiere um, yeah. ever. So clearly a sign that is both helping HBO Max and um, and like getting people to go see it in big screens. I wrote up yeah. a piece too saying um, basically Dean is too Dune is too big for your TV. So go. I read really that. like that take. Mm -hmm. I saw it and I was like, oh, it's a very smart take. But then um, you watch it on your TV. You ignored everything oh, yeah. I said. <laughs> And yes, just watch I did. it on your TV. It's smart for everyone who, you know, uh -huh. doesn't want to watch it on their TV. Yeah. I mean, look, I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy watching it on my TV. I don't really like going to the theaters uh -huh. in general. Yeah, yeah. Especially uh, now. Yeah. If if you can't exactly. guarantee safety and everything, then yeah. That and I put that straight up in my argument. Yeah. Um, but if you're vaccinated and you're masked and you could go to like not a very crowded screening, I do think it is worth it for a movie like Dune. But hey, the one the one yeah. thing I went to a theater for was Shang Chi, and and mm -hmm. I had a mask on the whole time. It was not mm -hmm. the most comfortable. Oh yeah, I'm double masked in the theater. Like yeah. I'm just like yeah. not not even yeah. taking sips of water. I'm just like there yeah. just to see a movie. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's anyway, very exciting. Such good news. Such good news for Dune. Good news for Dune. Uh, live that Dune life and uh, check it out in theaters if you can. Let's move on to what we've been working on. And I uh, just want to shout out the Facebook Connect is happening. So keep an eye out mm. for news around that. Um, we're actually two hours away from the start of the show, like right now as we're recording. So <laughs> things are going to happen. I have some news like in the hopper about Facebook's like vision for the metaverse. So you can expect to see all that over in Gadget. And uh, the, the rumor was that Facebook may end up changing its name to kind of more reflect this focus on the right. metaverse. So I have no clue. I don't know what's up. Meta, meta. Uh, meta, meta. Um, you know, by the time you hear this podcast, they will probably have announced something. But still, shoot us, uh, shoot us your suggestions of what you'd rather Facebook call themselves. Um, yeah, there, there's so many. Play-Doh. Yeah. I don't know. Face, <laughs> face mash. Ooh. That would be too uh, close to I think I think the thing was uh, my face. Oh, my yeah, face yeah, would have been would people, have actually been perfect. Yeah. There were a lot of people already accidentally calling that my face. My back face. in my day. Yes. My face. Back in my exactly. Day. Exactly. Um, so that's what um, what have you on? been working on, Trillin? Yeah. I am working on taking a break. I want to clear whatever I have left. Next mm -hmm. week I'm on off, so you won't hear me on the Engage podcast. You heard it here first. I just announced it. <laughs> um uh, yeah, and, that completely uh, ruins my plans and everything. Thank you, Sean. I know. Please go on. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. To it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Before this live <laughs> okay. broadcast, but <laughs> it's fine. Your take your nicely. time off. Everybody, yes. take your time off. If you've been working hard and you have been banking days off, take yeah, a time I, off. I need healing. Yeah. To take all of the all of the vacation days, or they're not going to take your vacation days. Uh, just call um, in sick. You know, <laughs> just like skip <laughs> off your work. No one's gonna yes. know. No one's gonna. But uh, no. But the you know before that, I was working on the multiple embargoes that Google and Apple decided to drop on the same day and all of that stuff. So I'll be coming back to more of the same. I've already got some meetings lined up for when I come back. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to say I'll miss y'all, but I won't. So. <laughs> um. Okay. Appreciate it. 
Let's move on to our pop culture picks. Uh, what do you got this week? Perfect. Show? All right. So I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard of this show. I'm not sure if you've seen it. This time around, I picked up a new TV series called Only Murders in the Building. Oh, yeah. It, I've heard, I'm looking forward to watching that. Yeah. Really good. Surprising. I mean, not surprisingly, I knew it was going to be good. So this is mm-hmm. a series starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez as three neighbors uh, in this ritzy building in Manhattan. I think Upper West Side, if not Upper mm-hmm. East. Um, and Very, um, very different someone, culturally there. Let's very, just say. But yeah. <laughs> very different culturally from the rest of... This is this is firmly like glitzy Gossip Girl territory. Almost, sure. But, but featuring a cast from all like different walks of life i will say like not everybody in this show is affluent right i think Mm -hmm. you know at some point they go out to long island like the not great parts of long island not the hamptons or whatever so anyway um someone gets someone in their building gets murdered and they're true crime podcast fans all three of them (laughs) and that's how they bond and they they, they it's steve martin and martin short doing a podcast as a tv show like i yeah yeah i would watch that that premise yep. alone, right? And Steve Martin is so good in this. I mean, Martin Short is Martin mm-hmm. Short is like always Martin Short. Like mm-hmm. Steve Martin is like to me, a really really good in this. I was just surprised. He his physical comedy on this is also great. Anyway, um, they 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 make a true crime pro- podcast about it, and it's awesome. And they try to find out what happens. And my favorite part though is like Tina Fey and Jane Lynch both guest star, mm-hmm. and they do. They're so great. They're both incredible sting also guest stars but stings like eh. i mean like stings guest starred on a bunch of things i think that i'm not does he just walk on shirtless like in dune i guess not it was the whole thing in <laughs> the, the, in the 80s dune, right? dune. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway uh he's not shirtless i don't think no he's not anyway, probably a little too old for that right now yeah 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 he's but he's on there i don't think you're ever too old to be shirtless but he just didn't do that anyway yeah. um good show great like the you know great pacing amy ryan does a great job as well so just so many good a- actors mm-hmm. i love seeing martin short and uh steve martin do their thing uh selena gomez is also you know a really strong actor so yeah enjoy enjoy this upbeat not really that upbeat but upbeat <laughs> tv series can't wait for season two very cool <laughs> oh god those notifications those notifications. sound effects man yeah Okay, let's move on to some of my picks. And one thing I want to just highlight is that, hey, the Cowboy Bebop trailer is here Mm. for the Netflix live action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop um, starring John Cho, Daniela Pineda, Daniela Pineda, uh, Mustafa Shakir. Um, I love Cowboy Bebop. And the Corgi, it looks like. And it, oh my God, Sherlyn, you're not even ready for this if you don't know the Corgi. But yeah. (laughs) I love Cowboy Bebop the show so much. Um, the act, the original, the anime, the anime is on Netflix right now too. Everybody could go watch. You should just watch it, Sherlyn. Um, but yeah, Cowboy Bebop was one of those shows that really, um, it came like well into like when I was watching anime and was a serious like uh, anime file. But I mm-hmm. certainly have made a lot of friends around that show. I love the character so much. Uh, I love the music by Yoko Kano. Like. Cowboy Bebop, I have listened to those soundtracks. I've watched that show enough that it is like embedded in my DNA. So I love Cowboy Bebop. And I've seen a lot of the preview stuff that they've been showing for the show. And it seemed a little weird. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Um, They had this like really cool cartoony uh, preview a couple of weeks ago. I don't think it looked that great. Um, It seemed like a little too weird and cartoony. Um, Yeah. I like the cast, but uh, trying to do something. Cowboy Bebop is one of those things that's just like perfect. It is a perfect show. Incredible, like incredible writing characters, the way perfect. it looks, the way it feels. <laughs> um, great music. Uh, I don't know what an adaptation can add, but I will say looking at the first trailer for this um, that Netflix dropped this week, I, th- I think it looks kind of interesting. I think it looks cool because it's like combining the aesthetic of anime and an animated show um, without looking completely cheap. I'd say like, it, it's almost like giving me some of the vibes of like what the Wachowskis get, did with speed racer, which is a great mm-hmm. movie, a great, great movie that didn't really like get its due during its time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love the aesthetic of this. 
the actors look good. John Cho looks like he is just like kicking ass as Spike <laughs> Spiegel. Uh, certainly an older version of Spike, but maybe that's going to be like written to the character. Um, everybody else, like uh, Daniela Pineda, like is really, really like living that Faye Valentine life. I, I love what Mustafa Shakir is bringing to this. Um, it looks cool. All I have to say is please don't suck. Uh, mm. But also uh, there is going to be new music from Yoko Kano for this series. Mm. So if, if anything, if anything, we get new stuff. And I think she's a genius composer, um, not just for anime, but she's done some video game stuff and some solo stuff. So more Cowboy Bebop jazzy music from her, I think is fantastic. Mm. So check out this trailer. And uh, yeah, I'll stay tuned. Stay you, tuned for our thoughts on this once it premieres. It's you November mentioned 19th. the Wachowskis. <laughs> Sorry. And I just had yep. to, as an aside, be like, I've been rewatching Sense8. It's just so good, too. So anyway. It's so we- good. Oh, it's, it's, it's so, so good. good. Um, so good. Yeah. When I need a and good maybe, cry, I just go to that. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe a good thing to watch, like as we get up to the Matrix Resurrections, which is still mm-hmm. coming this year. Um, very exciting. I love yes, them very. so much. I, I'm, I'm still very bummed. If anyone powerful at Netflix somehow listens to us, I don't know. Bring them back. Let them finish a, a third season the way they I, want I, to. They're busy. They're, they're both. Well, also, uh, both so many other things. half of the team, half of the team is no longer like making movies and stuff. Yeah. They're doing like plays. So. And also the budget was insane on that show. Like I get it. The show's they were, beautiful. Like, shooting in so yeah. many locations. Watch Sensei, was, everybody. Was Watch um, also Cloud Atlas, which I think evokes mm. like, a very similar sensibility. They do that on that too. Yeah. Yep, yep. Prepare for that. Uh, the other thing I want to shout out is a show on HBO Max called The Other Two. And mm. this is a it's a comedy series about a young, like, Justin Bieber-like uh, pop star, right? Um, <laughs> and his, like, useless siblings. So oh, no. he has an older sister and an older brother, a failed actor and a failed dancer living in New York. And uh, this is a really funny show about them, like, trying to basically deal with their... 13 year old brothers like worldwide pop star success Mm -hmm. while also being failures in their own right i think it's really funny love the cast uh this is a show that has uh ken marino in it who i think is great and everything wanda sykes molly shannon um people people i love to see in shows and it's also like just genuinely funny like it is Mm -hmm. laugh out loud funny at times um very specific in its humor. I'd say, like, if you're a very online person, a uh, very online Twitter person, you'll probably understand the love of what they're doing oh. in the show. Um, the show goes over also, like, um, being a young gay man in New York and showing, like, the reality of what that is, too, because mm-hmm. uh, the brother in the situation is gay. Uh, mm-hmm. There, It just, like, kind of does a lot. And it's also, like, just weirdly specific. Um, like, one joke that they... Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just look up an actor's name here. The uh, somebody I was looking up because it, it kind of like ties right back into this. Okay, right. So right. one one like running joke in the show is that uh, because the younger brother gets so famous, uh, they end up staying in Justin Thoreau's apartment in New York, <laughs> and there's like for New Yorkers, there's a whole like level of like um. I don't know, legend? There, there's like legendary stuff about Justin Thoreau and how he and his bros hang out in New York and like <laughs> have wild nights. So you have to be a very specific kind of like New Yorker and online person to kind of even get like why that's hilarious. Uh, I, I think it's really funny overall. The show is really good. And um, yeah, I think everybody should check it out. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it, Sherlyn. So it is one of those shows that doesn't really get promoted much, but it's right there on HBO Max. So if you want like a fun, fun comedy that also like is meaningful and has great characters check out the other two yeah all right i think we can take a pause here while we yeah, wait for chris taking, we can yeah, record the outro before carissa gets here or no uh let's or we can end we can do the outro well, yeah, yeah we can do some yeah. q a uh, personally yeah. i personally i absolutely hate when um it feels like tv shows have been partially written by twitter like uh i was watching uh what was it the maybe like within the first couple of episodes mm-hmm. of oh what was that show now um i mm-hmm. it was narrated by uh john McEnroe. oh yeah the, a, never have i ever which is never really have good. i ever okay so watch in, within yeah. the first couple of episodes of never have i ever uh, there was like John McEnroe is the narrator, but then there yep. was also Jack and John McEnroe on the TV, and they had John McEnroe literally say "it me" 
as the narrator. And I was like, <laughs> it, I just well, maybe not him, so maybe not him, but it well, is no, but I think literally yeah. anyone who brings Twitter into real life, no, get get out of here, go go sit. It's in the not about it's not like online. Twitter memes. It's more like very very funny observations that somebody who maybe is aware of Twitter life or online life would understand. Uh, it's funny. I, I think, yeah, especially media people too, because it's also very much about the uh, the pursuit of Hollywood and everything. But yeah, do we have any quick questions? We have a lot of comments on the pro one that I do want to talk about. I call it the mm -hmm. pro one because uh, I, as a letter, is actually a Roman numeral. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. It's I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, it's Sony. A much worse name uh -huh. here, but mm -hmm. going by Sony's previous naming standards, they they, they, they use these Roman are, numerals. These are Roman numerals. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this is a Roman. This is a pretty. I'm pretty sure it's a one, but call, call mm -hmm. it. Pro I, if you want, I don't care. Cool. More importantly, though, the uh, dual aperture that people are pointing out on the one inch sensor is actually a very good point. They are not achieving that full sensor size. Uh, thanks to Lee Wen Kong Lulz for pointing <laughs> that out. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say L U L U L Z, maybe Lulz, but uh, Lulz. anyway, um, but yeah, totally yeah. good point there. And also, people are pointing out it has dual aperture, another good point. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot mm -hmm. I don't know about this phone yet because, again, like I said, we don't have it in for testing. We just have seen the press release and are reporting um, the specs as they give it to us. I haven't torn down and looked okay. at it. But like I said, yes. we will put yep. someone here. Uh, who gotcha. knows? And our, uh, yes, Carissa Bell is here. Hello, Carissa. How's it going? Hello. Hi, hello. lady. Hello. <laughs> we are going to, so I'll do a full introduction for you. Let's just move into this. And yes. honestly, there's a lot of stuff I need to write after this too. So we may just have to like, Kit, okay. kill Q and A after this. Um, sure. Okay, oh yeah, we'll sorry guys. Time. We did a big go? Q and A up front. Which we is, did. I mean, we did like a why. big, yeah. big one. Are you? How do you sound, Chris? Are you good? Uh, yeah, I think so. I. Mm -hmm. And go ahead just... with your recording. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You start the recording. Gently tap the mic just to make sure that like that's yeah. moving the waveform. Okay. Hold on. This is how the sausage is made, everybody. Yep. Do we want to resync? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, Julio said perfect, so we're perfect. good. Perfect. Um, so just uh, clap or make a noise once we count down, Chris. Again. Yeah, I'm gonna count down from three, and then everybody makes a sound, uh, and then maybe we'll do another like five seconds of silence or something, and then we'll actually yeah. get into it. So, uh, three, two, one, silence. <laughs> You too, Julio. You too, Julio. Okay, let's talk okay. about Facebook's enormous mess. Enormous mess. Let's, let's keep this conversation going. Thank you again for joining us, Carissa. I know it's early on your end. <clears throat> uh, thanks to everyone in the chat who clapped or sent the emoji. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you all need to like clap at the same time. Yeah. Yes, awesome. that was that was really cute. It's Everybody almost sang. like they'll do whatever we say. We should just really <laughs> should just 100 really claps take advantage for of the 100th episode. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Oh it's great boy! Okay. Supportive. Yeah, it's great. We've got a lively chat. I mean, once I hear that, that is pa like that's Pavlovian. I just want to like oh, get man. going once I hear that. Um, okay, I'm gonna dog intro dog. this sequence. Let's go. <clears throat> One other major new. One other major piece of news that happened this week is the release of the Facebook papers. Tons and tons of files from whistleblower Francis Hagen um, that was released to uh, many dozens of media organizations. And uh, everybody kind of like did a concerted effort and tried to publish around the same time. And it seems like we're just learning a lot about how Facebook is continuously very, very awful. So joining us to talk about all this is Carissa Bell, senior editor in Gadget, who covers social networking for us. Hey, Carissa, how's it going? Hey, good to be here. Hello, and hello again to talk about Facebook's uh, absolute mess. Uh, you were on like earlier, a couple of weeks ago, like, you know, to discuss the the reveal of the leaker, um, kind of what this all means. And now we have just had like a deluge of reports over the last week. So could you give us like, what are some of the highlights from the Facebook paper so far? And what is it telling us that the like original Wall Street Journal reporting didn't tell us a couple of months ago? Yeah, I mean, there's just, it's it's a little overwhelming because there's just so So much, much. Yeah. yeah. And 
you know, it turns out that, you know, there's kind of something for everyone here. Like if you're, you're Politico, then there's, there's stories about Facebook's lobbying. You know, if you are um, internationally focused publication, there's lots of stories about Facebook's kind of uh, failures and misdeeds in uh, other parts of the world that aren't talked about as much in Western media. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think kind of a lot of it all kind of comes down to sort of like the same themes, which is, you know, like Facebook's uh, moderation failures, um, you know, both both here and abroad, um, how the various ways that uh, how and others say that Facebook has put uh, profit over safety. Yep. Um, you know, I think one of the things that might be more consequential for the company is that, you know, there is these documents are linked to uh, an SEC complaint and there's going to be an investigation. And, you know, one of the main allegations is that Facebook has uh, misled its investors, misled mm-hmm. its shareholders, um, its advertisers about sort of some of the, the, you know, some of these like really big issues as like losing teen users um, that they know that they have a lot of duplicate accounts you know, those are the kind of things that might actually result in, um, you know, some possibly some kind of action from from an SEC or regulatory body. Um, you know, but like these things are still coming out. They're going to be c- coming out for for several more weeks now. So I think there's there's a lot more that we're going. There's just so like it, it is easier to get overwhelmed because there's so much reporting, but it it all just seems to kind of like coalesce around the idea that. Facebook is very, very big right now, and they have no way to like control the power and the conversation of its own social network, right? So when it comes to things like hate speech, um, there's a lot of talk about like there's a lot of abuse towards women in other countries. Um, many things like climate denialism, like the, there, there was a point where some workers tried to like um, keep... Um, I forget the specifics of it, but they were basically like trying to stop censoring uh, climate denialism. And one of the Facebook leaders or managers allowed that to to kind of keep going. Do you have any like broad takeaways from everything we're seeing right now, Carissa? I mean, I think it shows one thing that kind of stands out is that you see that their, Facebook does have a lot of really thoughtful employees who work yeah. there because they care about kind of fixing these big problems and they want to come up with sort of creative ways to solve it. Um, and then they're not able to do so for a reason. A lot of times, you know, like you said, there's somebody at the top who, you know, is dealing with some other consideration other than just kind of fixing the problem. Um, you mentioned the climate denialism. There is one mm-hmm. about um, that related to COVID-19 misinformation, how uh, Zuckerberg sort of waffled in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, well, I think one of the more damning things was that uh, the WhatsApp team wanted to build a voting information center in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, sort of like the voting information center that Facebook had and uh, do a Spanish language version on WhatsApp. And Zuckerberg said that won't be politically neutral thing for Facebook <laughs> to do, um, which, you know, I think that's that's probably one of them. Voting. Voting is certainly. Yeah. Just the just the act of voting is uh, is not neutral. That is. That's that's the sort of thing that t- that just makes my blood boil too. Like just looking at where we are in America right now, as like a lot of like conservative politicians are trying to curb voting rights and like trying to like you know limit the ability for people to vote. And if fewer people vote, then basically if more people vote, more people vote Democratic. Like that's generally kind of how it goes. So it it is kind of um, sad to me to see like how Facebook is kind of playing a role in a lot of these like. Um, I don't know, in, in a lot of these like conservative leaning policies. Um, I don't, we, we don't have any broad takeaways right now. Like this is such a flood of information, Carissa. How do you feel as a reporter? Like, how do you, I, I feel like it's hard when like a new gadget arrives, you know, and uh, I have to like do all this testing and think about what it means, but you're, you're dealing with actual important stuff. Uh, how, how are you surviving and how are you like trying to figure out like what is worth paying attention to amid like all this news coming out? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I think uh, a lot of people who are covering this are kind of struggling just under like the amount of, of yeah. what's out there. And like you have a thousand, thousands of pages to read every day, basically. Um, yeah. If you're looking at all these docs. Yeah. You know, I think for me, a lot of it is just kind of looking at those sort of like bigger themes, you know, mm-hmm. because especially as these stories keep coming out, a lot of them, if you if you read them closely, it's, you know, 
kind of like maybe there's one or two new details um yeah. you know yeah. but a lot of the, the the bigger picture um stuff that's being led just things that we've already know things that things that have already been extensively reported on i mean this is all kind of mm -hmm. just becoming uh more evidence of all the things that we kind of already suspected or knew about um how facebook behaves in the world i think what's going to be more interesting to see how facebook can hold up to the pressure that all this is creating you know they mm -hmm. are um you know they've shown their history has shown us that they're like very good at kind of deflecting any kind of uh scandal or um or ignoring you know. it or yeah, yeah. but yeah. i mean this this seems this feels different um mm -hmm. you know and there's there's rumors <laughs> that they're gonna rename themselves which would be a, a pretty convenient distraction well so. we will find out in a couple hours and probably by the time you're listening to this podcast so actually that is something we're talking about uh carissa like we were talking about like what we expect around facebook connect which is going to be their big kind of like virtual, it used to be Oculus Connect. It is where they typically mm -hmm. dive into like what their plans are for VR and AR and stuff. But it seems like the metaverse is going to be a big topic um, this year. And there are also the rumors that they may end up changing their names to kind of reflect that too. What do you think about Facebook kind of like pushing on with like this brand new vision and like a whole, you know, trying to enter new territory while, you know, its house is on fire. It's like they're trying to move across the street and their house is still on fire right now. So I, I don't know if that's responsible or anything. What are your thoughts? I think it's sort of quintessential Zuckerberg, you yeah. know, where he just like he just wants to keep building things. You know, he says that he wants to like fix these problems, too. Um, but I think what we're seeing from these documents is that like he had, when he's had the opportunity to do right. so, he hasn't. And, you know, he definitely likes to, you know, think of himself as a sort of like, uh, really important technologist who's, you know, shaping mm -hmm. the future and all that. And so, you know, I think being able to like pivot and say, well, I'm going to focus on, on the metaverse now and, um, Facebook is deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Facebook's future is the metaverse. It's not, you know, the blue app. It's not, um, you know, WhatsApp groups inciting violence and all these things i think it, you know it makes perfect sense um from from that point of view i think mm -hmm. um whether people are by it and you know the world is is ready for for metaverse or even ready to understand what he's even talking about when he says that like i, I don't know yeah just for lynn like any thoughts about the stuff that I... has been dropping or where facebook's going I just like, you know, I'm looking at this long list of uh, the, the Google Docs that collects all the Facebook um, stories from this uh, from these mm -hmm. papers. Uh, and it's it's a really, really long list and chronicled by the day. And, and, and yeah. I'm sorry, recorded or collected by the day. <laughs> I just I just think about Carissa, your job, like what is like at this stage, <laughs> like what's your <laughs> daily workflow look like now you wake up and you go and look at the papers a little bit more and see and also I know there's a limited number of the pages out here. We're still waiting for more of them to be released, but is is like what do you what are reporters having access to right now? And what is sort of the process of going through some of that stuff? Is is it going to a website to download all of them to look at them at your own time? Or do you have to be in touch with someone's PR person? <laughs> like Facebook tried to smear a while back? Like what's mm -hmm. that what's it all look like? Yeah, so that's actually um that's a good question. There and I, I should point out that so I, I'm not officially part of the the consortium mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know the sort of I guess official group of uh journalists who are like getting mm -hmm. access to these like through uh the Hoggins channels yeah. I think um you know there's a whole sort of like media meta narrative about like how <laughs> yeah how it's, it's a super club out. yeah um, <laughs> yeah you know Gizmodo has um has been publishing a lot of these documents uh, mm -hmm. There's, you know, a few other folks who are trying to make them more readable because one of the challenges mm -hmm. is that like all of these documents are like um, photos of a computer screen. Yeah, um, that's hard. So mm -hmm. they're like some of them are, uh, you know, not, they're not the easiest to read. They're definitely not, you know, something you can search or like use like normal like PDF software on necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so th th and that makes it even harder. I think again, it's like mm -hmm. sort of just looking for. Those themes, like looking at what the actual documents are, you know, some of them mm -hmm. are just sort of based on like an employee post on Workplace mm -hmm. um, and some comments, things like that, which, you know, I think are important because they show you what employees are thinking, but they're not necessarily mm -hmm. on the same level as like these sort of like bigger research documents that were prepared for like, um, you know, mm -hmm. leadership at the company, for example. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see like what all this leads to just because, hey, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when Microsoft got in trouble for a web browser. 
okay? And got in serious trouble for a web browser. Carissa, yeah. this is our 100th episode, and DaVinci's been taking a lot of walks down memory lane. Walk this down the path. <laughs> but also, listen, if you're going to understand the present, you got to understand the past. And agree, it is wild that all this stuff is happening. Um, 20, <laughs> yeah, a while ago. A bit, uh, yeah, in the late 90s, um, 20 plus years ago, Microsoft was in deep, deep shit for prioritizing Internet Explorer over Netscape Navigator in Windows. And now for we have a company thing. for one thing. And mm -hmm. that took them years to kind of deal with yeah. in court and like kind of deal with a solution. Uh, Facebook, it's like relentless. The amount of things that Facebook yeah. is breaking in our society and in democracies and in so many things. So yeah. do, do you have any sense of like how it seems like regulation is more on the table than ever, but do you have any sense of like how governments and people will end up responding to all this carissa yeah i mean it's it like i said it, it's kind of it's hard to know like there's already been several hearings about uh these issues just uh here in, in our congress um you know uh, elizabeth warren tweeted yesterday that now she's like extra motivated to uh see facebook broke up um mm -hmm. ftc is reportedly um having a look at these documents so uh, and Facebook itself told its employees, you know, that they kind of have to preserve all their communication, um, you know, which signals that they're sort of staring down some some serious investigations. So it it does seem like we are going to see something uh, come out of this. Like nobody really knows what, you know, because it's one of those things that, you know, Hogan herself, when she uh, appeared in the Senate uh, a while back, she, you know, she had some really thoughtful ideas on, on you know, what could happen, like Section 230 reform. Um, you know, changing Facebook's algorithms in some way, you know, but those are hardly widely agreed on steps mm -hmm. that should be taken. There's there's still a lot of disagreement about how to do this correctly because there, there's, yeah, there's so many, I just want to point out too, like uh, there was pushback against, um, as uh, Frances Haugen was talking to UK lawmakers, I think she revealed like more of her thoughts about how, kind of how things work within Facebook and the things you'd want to fix. And she was talking about limiting encryption. And that is something I know privacy advocates are very, very careful about how they talk about, right? Because sure, um, yes, being able to, having less encryption will allow like more moderation of content and stuff and may help like with, uh, with bad things and bad groups of people talking together. But in terms of privacy, it's a bad, bad thing. I, have mm -hmm. you thought about that, Krissa, and kind of like how... Yeah, I don't, I don't think she is, you know, not all of her opinions are the things everybody is agreeing with. So it yeah. is kind of interesting, like how this is all shaping up too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a hard thing to balance. You talk about, when you talk about walking back encryption, you know, yeah. that's something that uh, Zuckerberg has been very bullish on, but like a lot of others, um, you know, in the wider uh, tech security community are as well, because a lot of these places where Facebook operates, they have authoritarian governments. Um, they have, you know, people who, you know, really need to feel safe on the internet. And maybe you can argue whether like WhatsApp is like the best version of, of encryption that's out there. But, you know, when you talk about taking away some of those protections, like I think we have a pretty good idea that like people will be more at risk in some places. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, I think it's a conversation like worth having about like, you know, looking at sort of what the trade-offs are there. But I think, you know, that's something that a lot of people are rightfully saying that, they would need to be really careful about doing. Mm -hmm, mm. Mm -hmm. Seems like we, yeah, we need more people in charge to kind of understand the broader risks and stuff involved in all of this. But uh, just want to say thank you so much, Chris, for joining us again to chat about all this. <laughs> um, we are definitely going to have you on, like as we get more revelations. And I feel yeah. like, um, yeah, it is nice to have somebody we could talk to who has also been thinking about this while I'm off thinking about gadgets. Like I, I wish I could read every single bit of this Facebook reporting, but there's not enough time in the day. So yeah, where can yeah. people find you on the internet, Carissa? Uh, on Twitter, at Carissa B. E. And Carissa on B. Gadget, of course. And on <laughs> <I guess. laughs> All forgot. right, thank you so much. I forgot to say the thing everyone has to say. And I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Carissa. Thank you. All right, <laughs> Oh, yeah. To see and Julio, you've been having entirely too much fun today. <laughs> that is a good way good. to end good, uh, the episode. Thank you so much. Um, Chris, go ahead and save your audio and shoot it over okay. to Ben. 
And I think we will just wrap. So you can head out whenever you're set. Um, do you care MP3 file? Wave, no. please. Uh, wave file. Okay. Always wave. Yeah. Not WAV. Okay. I'm glad I asked. Yes. <laughs> MP3s are already uh, compressed and whatnot. Yep. All that fun stuff. It has artifacts. All right. I guess I should record the outro, right? Yes. Yeah, go right. for it. Just going to make sure I have the script in case I forget anything, but it's pretty much all memorized by now. All right. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. <laughs> that is not okay. part of it. Well, that's it for the episode, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Devendra online at at Devendra on Twitter, where I'm talking about movies and Dune and all that fun stuff, and at the Filmcast at thefilmcast.com. If you want to send me some great examples of true crime podcasts, I'm at Sherlyn Lowe on Twitter. Email us your thoughts at podcast at engadget.com. Leave us a review, please, on iTunes, and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we are done. Happy and 100. We're good. Yeah, we're going to have to run, folks. Can't do Q&A because Sorry, <laughs> guys, more news. More we, news. Yeah, I know. We appreciate everything. Thanks, Joshua Peck, Mark Dell, and Ron Barbos are the last few names I see. And, and, and Declan Flynn and Jonathan. Declan Flynn, uh, yeah. Yes, like, there you go. Thank you to everybody who listened over this time. Uh, it's been a really great thing, especially during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Just like having one unifying thing to focus on. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And again, just the live streams have been so much, ha have been so great. That was also pretty much in the middle of the pandemic. We started doing that in uh, August of 2020. So for our 100th episode, the big thank yous come uh, go to uh, the people who did our stream, which is our video team, which is led by Kyle Mock with Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. But it's powered by everyone in the chat. Again, thank you. And if you've stuck around this long, come on. You know that we live in a world of algorithms. You know how much a five-star review can mean to helping people find the show. So give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Say something nice, and we'll see you next week. Later. Later.